I've really begun to appreciate Drum Workshop's 7000 series stands. They're single braced, the tubes are smaller diameter than their regular super heavy duty stuff, but it has all the pro parts you want and it's fairly lightweight, not incredibly lightweight, but you know, I'll take the trade off of incredible functionality, not nearly as heavy as the double braced heavy duty stuff. And it just feels great. Again, because speed is everything, I'm using the Gibraltar quick release clutch on the hi-hat. Push the button, pulls off. My live hi-hats, 15 inch Artisan Light. I can use these for anything loud, soft, in between. They have a pitch that just sits really nicely on stage. It's not too cutting where it's, it kind of takes your head off, but it's not too papery where, where it just gets lost. If I'm on a show, for example, where I want a little more cut from the hi-hats, I'll actually just put the heavier cymbal on top. Again, with the Drum Workshop 7000 series for the ride cymbal stand, I'm absolutely using every single memory lock I can because I just want to take as little apart as possible, throw it in the case, set it up, and it is always going to be in the same place. I like the wider base on this one, especially for the ride cymbal, because of those outdoor gigs where it's really windy. You know, you get a May gig and it's springtime and the, the wind's going crazy. Ride cymbals on stands can turn into sails really quickly and they kind of hurt when they land on you. So um, trying to find, you know, the balance between a stable stand that's not going to fly away without it being 30 pounds. I carry two ride cymbals in my cymbal bag for just kind of all around everything. It's the Sabian 21 inch HHX complex medium ride. Great attack, great wash. You can crash it has a really nice bell. It's never overbearing, but it's not wimpy either. Just an incredible all around ride cymbal. I absolutely love this complex line from Sabian. My other ride symbol is a 20 inch HH Vanguard. This is a really adaptable symbol in that it's a great crash and it's a great ride symbol. It doesn't have a whole lot in the way of a bell because it, the bell's pretty small. But if I'm playing a gig where I only want one symbol, this is gonna be the one I pull out. I normally use three symbols on the kit and switch out the symbols depending on what the gig is. For the other two cymbal stands, I don't want a boom stand because a straight stand works just fine in these two positions where I have them. I don't want the extra weight of the tilter and the, the boom arm and everything. So I'm using the Rogers Dynamatic cymbal stands. They're really lightweight, they work beautifully, and what I really appreciate about them at the end of the gig is you can literally collapse them one-handed. Again, to shave off every last possible second when it's time to tear down, I'm using the Tama Quick Release Wing Screws. Sabian's HHX Complex Thing Crashes are by far my favorite line of crash symbols I've ever played. I have a whole bunch of them in every size they make. And for my live rig, I'm carrying two, a 16 and an 18. For shows where I need charts, which is a lot of them these days, I swear by my trusty iPad with the Fourscore app. This is an amazing app for performing musicians, and I really particularly appreciate that you can put a metronome in there and have the tempo of the song right in your ear on stage. That counts for a lot. When you're the drummer, you gotta count it off at the right tempo. I carry one more Rogers Dynamatic cymbal stand for holding things on the left side of the kit, such as my iPad, or if I need, say, a splash cymbal or this little 8-inch chopper, for example, which I use as kind of an auxiliary hi-hat. One thing about the Roger stand is they don't offer a boom stand. However, the tubes are just a very standard size, so I simply took a Tama boom arm and stuck it in there. Works great. Now we need something to hit these drums with. I've been with the Innovative for a few years now, and it started with the stick they make that, for me, is the absolute Swiss Army stick which is the Legacy 5AB. It covers every dynamic range I want to hit. I can get incredibly loud with them, play incredibly quietly, anything in between. The tips are great. They just have a great tone on the cymbals. 
I'm a big fan of this stick as kind of the do everything stick. For times when sticks are just too loud, I swear by the innovative fat brooms. It's really easy to get a grip on them because they're pretty thick, but they barely make any sound if you play them quietly. If you really lay into the drums and the cymbals, you can actually get a lot of tone out of these. I've done complete gigs where I'm really laying into the drums, but the volume stays controlled, which makes singers happy, makes club owners happy, you know, makes everybody happy. And they're fun to play with. Wire brushes are essential, especially if you're doing cocktail hour or a jazz gig or a train beat on a singer-songwriter gig. I use Innovative's WBR1. Mallets are great for singer-songwriter gigs, for example, where you want a pretty moody tone or you're going to be doing a lot of cymbal swells. I use the GT2, which are timpani mallets, but they work beautifully both on the drums and on the cymbals. Finally, I've had this LP jingle stick in my bag for about 20 years. When you know, there's not a budget for a percussionist. It can be you playing the drums at the same time. Of course, I always have a drum key in the bag, plus a spare hi-hat clutch. I actually carry a couple of these because one time early on in my career, one of my first big professional gigs, it was an expensive wedding at a fancy country club. I forgot my hi-hat clutch during the cocktail jazz set and had to go find a friend who had one and the band was not pleased with me. So I carry extra. During the gig, I hang the stick bag on my floor tom so that everything is within easy reach. The last thing I'll bring to a gig, and this usually stays in the trunk of the car unless it's needed, is an extra short boom stand. This one was actually given to me my, by my friend Nick from Drummer's Resource, hey Nick. And the good old classic Shure SM57. It's an amazing dynamic microphone, works beautifully on drums, it's a classic. Also, in a pinch, if you're short a vocal mic, this will work. I carry two spare mic cables with me, and I make sure that they're a different color than black, just so that it's really obvious which ones are mine, and so that they don't get wrapped up and, you know, thrown in somebody else's case at the end of the night. On a lot of gigs I play, and probably a lot of you as well, you really don't need the drums in the PA. I mean, drums are a loud instrument. Sometimes have, having a little extra reinforcement on the kick is great. Sometimes having a little extra from the rest of the kit can be cool too. But usually on a gig, you know, there's at least one vocal mic right in front of you. Sometimes there's three plus horn mics plus whatever. Every one of those mics is acting as a drum mic as well, mainly picking up the high end and especially the cymbals which is why I use darker cymbals because I don't want them, you know, crushing everyone's vocals. But a spot I want to show you, which I find much more useful when you have two mics on the kit, instead of just putting the second mic on the snare where you only get kick and snare and then you go to the toms and the whole kit disappears, this is a great spot on a live gig for the second microphone. I use this a lot in the studio as well. The microphone is just pointing at the snare, but it's in between the rack tom and the floor tom, kind of evenly split. And it picks up all three really nicely. You can roll off some of the low end because that's already covered with the kick drum mic. So you're really just getting the attack from the shells of the drums without the hi-hat and the cymbals. Because again, those are being covered by all the vocal mics in front of you. So you really don't have to worry about your cymbals being heard out in the audience. I've never really had a favorite cymbal bag until I got a tackle bag a couple years ago. This thing's great. It's been through a zillion gigs, a bunch of flights, but I appreciate that I can shove this thing underneath a, an airplane seat in, you know, steerage class, and it fits, and there's just enough room for my feet, too, so I don't have to check my cymbals, which is the last thing I would want to do. It's a backpack, which is essential, especially if you're getting on a subway and going to play a show in New York City. One thing that's always with the cymbals is this Aquarian kick patch. If you're in the middle of a gig and you break your bass drum head, which has only happened to me once on stage, you can stick this thing on and uh, it patches it enough to get through the gig so you can get home and get a new head. It also works really well as a snare drum muffler. I mainly use the hi-hat pouch to hold extra things. In my bag, a spare extension cord, mainly for the iPad and charger. This little Rhythm Tech Smoky Shaker. I took a couple lessons with the great Billy Ward who told me about this trick where you get one of their, it's their can shakers and you step on it enough that it makes flat spots which are easy to hold. I've had this for, I 
I'm almost sure 20 years. It's a little rusty. Definitely beaten up. Still shakes just fine. Next up is a clip for my phone for the times when I just need tempos. I don't actually need charts and I just clamp it to my hi-hat stand. Good to go. Next up is a spare hoop protect from Twin Cities Drum Collective. Mainly this is for when I'm playing on a house kit or somebody else's kit which has a super thin hoop or something, if for whatever reason my pedal won't clamp to, to the hoop. This actually adds some extra thickness and uh, some extra bite. A spare charger for my phone and iPad. I don't really use in-ear monitors, but I really like these Sure, They're 215s, I think. They block out a ton of noise. They sound pretty good as headphones, nothing amazing. And then the spare adapter to make sure that I can connect it to my phone or iPad because Apple doesn't do headphone jacks anymore. A headphone extension, just in case. And finally, an extra poofy beater for, again, when I'm on a house kit and I want a super mellow tone. This is very useful to have. And the little accessory pouch, extra earplugs, just in case. A Leatherman, because you never know what's gonna break. The really important thing though, is if I'm getting on a flight, I have to remember to take this thing out because it does have a really sharp blade on it. Another spare hi-hat clutch, can't have too many. You probably can, but a couple of extra wing screws in case the house kit is missing them, which they usually are. For the same reason, some extra cymbal sleeve washers and felts, spare snare wire thread. Finally, this Promark cymbal sizzler, which I've had for probably 25 years. Great for ballads and, you know, jazz gigs. It's time to pack everything up. And as I mentioned, I want to get out as fast as I can and I want to get the entire kit in two trips, no more. So for that reason, I'm a big fan of these Beetle bags, padded bags, they're waterproof, they're really durable. You can carry multiple drums in one hand, which I really appreciate over the molded plastic cases, which I would use if I were on tour and had more storage space than the trunk of my car. I've used XL Specialty Percussion molded cases since the very early 90s, and I actually used to just drive up to the factory when I lived in Indiana where they're made. Great cases, I've had this hardware case for 20 years. And one thing I've learned over the years, for a while I was trying a hardware bag, which I would carry, and that just doesn't work over long distances. So get a hardware case of wheels. You'll be very thankful if you don't have one. Once I was on the bus heading to the airport for a European tour, where I just needed to bring my cymbals and a snare drum. And I left my snare drum on the bus and there was no identification in the case itself. I never saw the snare drum again. After that, I went and bought a box of 50 luggage tags. And I don't know if you guys remember, but there used to be things called business cards that we used to hand out their pieces of paper with your information on them. Uh, nobody wants them anymore. I haven't handed one out in years, but they're perfect for these things. So I highly recommend get a luggage tag, Put it on your cases, do something just so, you know, don't be a fool like me. Identify your stuff. All right, let's tear this kit down and get out of here. The last thing I want to say is make sure your gear is insured and make sure it's insured specifically for professional use out gigging. If you're just using your renter's insurance or your homeowner's insurance, that's fine if it's in the house, but if you're out getting paid, I do believe you will not be covered if your gear is destroyed or stolen. And I had a situation where my old recording studio was destroyed in a hurricane and insurance came through and helped me build this room. So, I can recommend Music Pro Insurance. They've been great. There are lots of other places that'll do it as well. So, what's your ultimate gigging kit? What's the Swiss Army knife, the kit that you can take to any gig and you know you're covered? Love to see it. Please leave us a comment below. And happy drumming. <laughs>